Chapter 42, Job. Job responds to the Lord. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything, and no one can stop you. You asked, who is this that question my wisdom with such ignorance? It is, and I was talking, it is I, and I was talking about things I knew nothing about, things far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. And the Lord had finished speaking to Job. He said to Ephias and Timanit, I am angry with you and your two friends, for you have not spoken accurately about me as my servant Job has. You take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer on your behalf. I will not treat you as you deserve for you have not spoken accurately about me as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz and Temanit, Bildad and Shuhit and Zophat the Namathite did as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord accepted Job's prayer. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Then all his brothers, sisters, and former friends came and feasted with him in his home. And they consoled him and comforted him because of all the trials the Lord had brought against him. And each of them brought him a gift of money and a gold ring. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. For now he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, and 1,000 teams and 1,000 female donkeys. He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. He named his first daughter Jemima, the second Kizia, and the third Karen Hapuch. In all the land, no woman were as lovely as the daughters of Job, and their father put them into his will along with their brothers. Job lived 140 years after that living to see four generations of his children and grandchildren. Then he died, died an old man who had lived a long, full life. Let's learn from Job. If you don't know the book of Job, Job was a man who, in the beginning of his life, was very blessed by the Lord. His house was fruitful. He had thousands of animals. He was the biggest and richest man in Israel. And then Satan came to the Lord and said, basically, he is only believing in you because, well, you're blessing him. So if you take your blessing away, you will see how he really is. And then Job goes through trials of tribulations and through many, many days and months of being, of, of his sons being killed, his daughters being killed, his animals being killed, his house being destroyed, himself becoming sick. And then his friends Eliphaz and Timna come to him and talk to him. And they first don't say anything. And then they talk him down. They say, it must be your fault that God acted like this on you. But Job stayed faithful. Job stayed faithful. 
until a certain point, and then he said, oh yeah, how can the Lord do this upon me? I've never done anything wrong in my life, and then his friends speak in terms of the Lord, but in terms in the wrong way of the Lord, as we just heard in the book of Job. Now, let's all see what Job did. Job still lived through that. Job could have killed himself, but he didn't. He still lived through that, and the Lord multiplied his blessings. And this is the same thing we do when we have discipline. The Lord blesses us, and then he tests us with a difficult trial, with a difficult set in the gym, with a difficult day in our lives, and we have to choose how to react to that. And we either overcome or we become. We either overcome the trial or we become the trial. We either overcome the shit that happen in our lives or we become shit. Now, by the end of Job's discipline, God multiplied his blessings even more. He doubled them to what it has been before. And that's the same thing as happens when you have discipline in your own life. You go into a set of bench press and you rob yourself off of the blessing you had which is comfort you rob yourself of of this fundamental blessing of being pain-free and then you give that to the lord and you trust the lord to protect you to not let you get injured and then you will have the blessing doubled as before that you will have more strength and more comfort because the Lord takes something and makes it better just by it being with him so be very careful with what you do during a tribe is the message of this video be very very careful what you do because the Lord watches you when you have discipline, then you give what you had once, the blessing that you have. You either give it to the Lord or the Lord takes it away from you to test you. And then what happens is if you don't go through the trial, the Lord will keep it. And he will give it back to you as soon as you went through that trial. And when you go through that trial, when you finally do the hard set, when you finally go to the gym, when you finally started your journey, when you finally worked on your purpose, then he will give it back to you twofold, threefold, tenfold. So be careful what you do in trials and tribulations. Master your mind.